Good morning. Um, hey there. I'm Dave Lemieux, and oh, it's a little slippery here. It's very, um, you know, it's uh, it's very low tide. So at high tide, obviously the water's up where I am, and therefore it gets really slimy. So I'm kind of standing on some slime, but I'm okay now. I've got my footing down. Um, you just missed some swimmers. It is cold. This water is cold, uh, but a lot of people are swimming these days. Um, so you're probably used to these seaside chats being about um, Dave's picks, um, occasional box set uh, release announcements. Um, sometimes we talk about tea. <laughs> sometimes we talk about different things. There's always something to talk about when you're um, doing one of these seaside chats. Um, speaking of chats, these birds are very loud today, and there's a whole bunch of ducks and oyster catchers behind me. And oyster catchers can get very loud. So um, I apologize if you start hearing that, uh, but can't do anything about it. Uh, I suppose I could scare them off, but I'm not going to do that. Um, so I'm here today not to talk about a Dave's Picks or a box set or tea, um, although uh, I'm actually today drinking coffee. It's quite early in the morning, as you can probably see by the quality of the light hitting me. Um, the sun's coming up. It just came up a little bit ago. But I'm here to talk about a brand new, out, well, brand new, uh, 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 an album release, but it's actually a re-release of an album that came out 50 years ago this year. That, of course, would be 1971, 50 years ago, and that, of course, would be Skull and Roses, known by a couple of other names, known officially, I guess the name is Grateful Dead, known as uh, Skull and Roses, known as uh, another name that I'm not going to say here in case uh, your kids are watching, or but you know what that name is, um, so you can call it whatever you want, really. But um, the bottom line is, it is a great album, and I don't often do this. I don't often have props. I know I had one when we talked about tea. I know um, I've read a couple notes sometimes. Uh, I read that Bruce Hornsby email for the Dave's Picks 37 about William and Mary. But today I actually do have a prop and I'm gonna get it right now. Um, so this is my original, whoop, there it's there, I just slipped. Uh, this is my original uh, 1971 pressing of the Grateful Dead album from 1971. Um, I bought it in 1985 at a used record store in Ottawa, Canada. Um, remember this guy? Oh, I love this. I used to look at this so often. I just sit there and listen to it. So I bought this album, Oyster Catchers. Um, oh my gosh, the, geez, they're right above me. They're, well, there's two trying to catch each other. I'm sorry, I, I know people, sometimes get a little irritated that I get distracted, but it's very distracting out here, right? Um, those two oyster catchers are gone. There's a couple over here. Um, so anyhow, um, this is my pressing. I bought it at a used record store. Now, at the time, 1985, I remember thinking, I was, oh my gosh, this album that I'm holding in my hands is 14 years old. I couldn't believe it. I was like, oh my God, this is so old. And here I am holding an album that's now 50 years old. That's my original pressing and the Warner Brothers label. Uh, since then, we've done many reissues of the album, uh, going back to the 2001 CD reissue that was in the Golden Road box set. We've done some vinyl uh, pressings, a few of them actually, with either with Rhino and, uh, and Warner, and sometimes also with um, third-party companies. Um, but we're doing it again, and it sounds, I think, better than it ever has, and I know that sounds like a sales pitch, but I gotta say that we wouldn't keep doing this if they didn't keep sounding better. And I think that's owing largely to technology uh, in terms of uh, bringing analog tape back to life. We went back we went back to the original analog tapes, no digital files here. Um, and we went to Plangent Processes, of course, and then Dave Glasser, Grammy-winning mastering engineer, good friend, Dave Glasser, uh, did the mastering of this. So we're doing another reissue of this, and I remember getting this album, putting it on, and I knew a couple of, well, I knew a few of the songs, actually, from live tapes that I'd had, but these versions, almost, I mean, all of them became, to me, my definitive versions. Now, a few of them actually are the definitive versions. They were never recorded in the studio. There's a lot of cover songs on there that the Dead never recorded, obviously, in the studio, but uh, you, you kick off with Bertha. Later on the album, on side four, you've got, uh, Warfrat to me again it's the definitive Warfrat and then the other I mean one of the other big things is the huge version that takes up an entire side of the other one which you kind of hear that very tail end of Cryptical uh, after they they had done that there's from uh, 428 uh, 428 uh, uh, one at the Fillmore East and you hear that, and then you, they go into the full drum solo by Bill Kreutzmann, about three or four minute drum solo before Phil Lesh, of course. 
barrels into the introduction to the other one and it is a magnificent piece of music i remember uh specifically i've listened to that tape many times going back to the mid 80s but i remember once i was i, I went to um, graduate school in england and i didn't bring a lot of grateful dead with me but i did bring uh 420 my cassette tape of 428 uh, 71 and i remember listening to that other one with headphones on a walk around this little pond in england and it was at that moment where I realized that what I'm hearing is probably one of the greatest pieces of music ever created by anyone, ever. Um, now, I don't know if that's true, but I certainly at that moment thought it was, and I still listen to this album probably as often as any Grateful Dead album that I listen to, up there with American Beauty. Um, and I'd listen to Grateful Dead albums more than you'd think. I mean, I obviously listen to a lot of um, studio, uh, live Grateful Dead um, for the Dave's Picks, for the box set. I'd say for certain, the bulk of what I listen to is live Grateful Dead, but I do listen to albums quite a bit. If I have 40 minutes, or in this case, almost 80 minutes, um, I will put this album on quite a bit. And it's funny because of all of the reissues we've done, um, and they sound magnificent. They certainly sound better than this. Um, this album has been played, I would say, hundreds of times. I still listen to this version, uh, this actual pressing, and I think that's kind of the nostalgia of knowing where the clicks and pops and the scratches might be, and and the tone of the sound, which is certainly degraded in these 50 years, but is something about it. Um, whenever we do a reissue, I keep it in my collection. I listen to it. Um, but this is the one, I guess it comes back to uh, nostalgia for the thing you know. So this one is certainly uh, a magnificent uh, record. So the album itself, obviously, uh, the songs on it are songs that would remain in the Dead repertoire. Most of them, not all of them, but many of them uh, for the next 24 years. And they're still played when Dead and Company plays and, and, and Wolf Brothers and further before that and, and uh, you know, all the, the Dead. Um, so, you know, Bertha. Uh, we've got some terrific uh, of the, the cowboy songs that Bob would make part of the Grateful Dead repertoire again for the next 24 years. Me and my uncle Mama tried a uh, nice dose of pig pen with Big Boss Man, that aforementioned full side of the other one, similar to Dark Star being a full side on Live Dead a couple years earlier. Um, playing in the band, a brand new song. And Johnny Be Good, a song the Dead had started playing. Uh, generally attached with Greatest Story Ever Told, which wasn't included on this. Um, and then you get the classic show closer that closed a lot of shows from kind of 71 through 74, and that's not Fade Away going down the road. And then the album fades out right before they go back into the not Fade Away reprise. Um, but I, I love anytime I see a set list uh, from that era with the not Fade going down the road, not Fade closer. I think of versions, actually the ones that were right around the release of the album in the fall of 71 those to me are the ones to check out as well um, there's a couple from November uh, there's uh, one from 11 15 71 Texas magnificent piece of music uh, December there's one in a couple of st. Louis uh, the, the couple in st. Louis magnificent um, and then through 72 Europe 72 they played that combination quite a bit would have been very familiar to the listeners in Europe 72 because Skull and Roses had come out in Europe as well so the reissue, Plangen Processes did the, uh, the, the tape restoration, uh, speed correction, brought it all back to life, sounds as good as it's ever sounded. Jamie's doing mag magnificent work with Plangent. Uh, Dave Glasser did the mastering. Uh, so we've done, I think, it, I mean, you can check that.net, but I'm pretty sure there's a couple configurations. Uh, there's the, the vinyl and they, there's a CD, a deluxe CD. As you know, we've been doing kind of 50th anniversary reissues of the Dead Studio Records. Um, we're not doing, uh, exactly the same thing with the live albums but with this one we decided to do one which does come with a bonus disc and it is a bonus disc that we've been asked for many many times as a release and we're very happy it's finally coming out that is from July 2nd 1971 at the Fillmore West in San Francisco the Grateful Dead's last performance ever at the Fillmore West in San Francisco um, the Dead's Vault didn't have the complete show so we weren't able to do the complete show and frankly we're okay with that because what we've included the 80 minutes that we've included as a bonus disc in the Skull and Roses deluxe CD is very complimentary to Skull and Roses there are a few of the same songs in albeit very different versions there's a version of the other one that is just it's it's just as good as the one on skull and roses extremely different there's a not fade going down the road not fade again 
magnificent, terrific. This is the dead saying goodbye to the Fillmore West, kind of their home court in San Francisco going back to like 68 with the Carousel Ballroom, 69, 70 uh, with the Fillmore West. And then they kind of outgrew it and Bill Graham, I mean, most bands outgrew it that were playing there. And uh, Bill Graham closed it down as well as the Fillmore East in New York City uh, right before that. And then most uh, shows were held at, uh, not most, but a lot were held at Winterland, at uh, Berkeley Community Theater, places like that, places with bigger capacities, which is kind of what a band like the Grateful Dead needed at the time. They were extremely popular. Um, I, and then you put out an album like this a year later, or later on in 71, and the popularity just goes through the roof. This is the Grateful Dead's first ever gold record, uh, ahead of Working Man's Dead, ahead of Live Dead, ahead of American Beauty, amazingly. Um, this album came out in the fall of 1971, and virtually immediately, within a couple of weeks of being released, it was certified gold by the RIAA. So uh, it holds that mark as being the first ever Grateful Dead gold record, and worthy, uh, worthy candidate. There's a very classic picture of uh, the band holding up their gold records, and I think one of them's trying to light, light it on fire. Uh, classic Grateful Dead. Um, it's a beautiful day. Um, I just realized that. I looked back. It was like nice calm water, a few boats out there, a lot of birds. Um, yeah, it is a good day. Um, so it's available now if you're watching this at dead.net and probably other places, but definitely dead.net. It's something that um, really is, aside from the Dave's picks, the first thing we're doing, uh, we're announcing and we're getting rolling off for uh, 2021. We have a heck of a year coming up as well, um, which is why I kind of make a point of saying this is the first tip of the iceberg of our 2021 releases. I can think outside of the Dave's Pick series, and I'm not going to give too much away, and I'm not trying to be coy or secretive. It's because Rhino does such a wonderful job of announcing things and the timing of things. I leave it to them because they do such a great job of this. Um, but in addition to this, um, I, outside of the Dave's Pick series, I can think of at least three other very cool things that are coming out. Oh my gosh, a couple of eagles are flying behind the camera, but they they just went out of, uh, no, they're coming back. Oh no, they went back to, they flew down to a tree that they like to hang out in. I was gonna turn the camera around, I've done that before, but uh, they, I thought they were gonna come this way, but they went that way. Um, so we have, a, we have a, a, a massive year coming up, not to mention the four Dave's Picks, of which we'll be doing these, uh, these videos for. But uh, we will see you here for that. Check it out. You're probably watching this because you know that uh, Skull and Roses has come out uh, on vinyl, on CD with the bonus disc from um, July 2nd, 71. Also the bonus disc. I mean, we had to get a big dose of pig pen out there. See, Skull and Roses is a, is a little light on pig pen compared to let's say Live Dead, which had a full side dedicated to him with Turn On Your Love Light. Um, this is a little lighter. So uh, fortunately, uh, the Fillmore West show that's our bonus disc had a 17, 18 minute version of Good Lovin'. So that's on there. So you're going to get a nice big dose of pig pen, plus a dose of classic 1971 Grateful Dead with the other one and the Not Fade going down the road, Not Fade. So uh, please do check it out. We're very happy with this. Um, I mean, it's this is a, a long span of no new studio Grateful Dead between 1970 and American Beauty and 1973, late 73, October 15th to be exact, um, with A Wake of the Flood. So it's a long span with no studio material. So they put out a couple, well, three live albums. They put out um, Skull and Roses, and then a year later they put out Europe 72. And then in uh, 1973, to kind of fulfill the Warner Brothers contract, before they could slip into Grateful Dead Records' Wake of the Flood, they put out Bear's Choice. So going back to 1970 for some live material. So, uh, chatty little birds. Um, but uh, we'll see you here soon. Um, what are we now? Yeah, we're going to be having another Dave's Picks pretty soon. Um, and we'll, uh, yeah, it's going to be a good year. Uh, I'm sure of that. Uh, musically in terms of our archival releases, hopefully in terms of live stuff, hopefully in terms of other stuff. Um, let's all stay uh, safe and healthy, and thank you for watching Skull and Roses. Uh, check it out, uh, vinyl, CD, bonus disc from the Fillmore West. Great stuff, thank you for listening.